So you want to hit that perfect jump smash and pressure crush or be that cool kid in PE class? Well, let me tell you, having a good jump smash will help with neither of those because no one cares about you except me. I care about you. That's it today. I'm going to tell you the five mistakes you're doing in your jump smash that's ruining your badminton game. So make sure you show some support and like, comment, and subscribe and watch the end of this video. The first mistake you're making is that your shot timing is bad. Either you're hitting it too early or too late. Let me show you what too late is. When you're coming up and as the bird is falling into your contact point already, that's when you're starting to jump and then your contact point gets low and you try to swing really quickly and that either goes into the net, into the ground or hits your rim or you don't generate any power because you don't actually have enough time to prep up. Now, too early is that when the bird is still coming up, you jump and as you're coming down, the bird has not come down and as you're almost landing, then the bird comes down and you're hitting it and that way, you can't hit it at all that way. Just don't do that. The perfect timing in your jump smash should be when the bird is coming as it's coming up in your 45 degree area of view from the opposite court. This is when you initiate your jump. Now, in the air, you have a little bit of a hold and then at that point, the bird will be right in front of you and through your hold, you generate your power like a normal smash and hit that smash and that's the perfect timing for a jump smash. The second mistake that's ruining your badminton smash is the fact that you can't jump. Now a lot of you may be out of shape, a lot of you may be jump impaired, a lot of you may not have the right technique to jump. If you don't have enough air time, you don't have enough time to generate power. So one thing, one good rule of thumb I would say if you're capable of doing a jump smash is if you put your racket down and you're able to do 10 tuck jumps. If you're able to do 10 tuck jumps, then maybe you can do one jump smash. And I would say every 10 tuck jump is a good indicator of how many jump smashes you can do. So if you can do 100 tuck jumps, that means you can do 10 jump smashes in a row. So make sure you practice your vertical. Otherwise, you don't have enough time to hit in the air when you don't have enough vertical to jump. And all your jump smashes is going to be like, what am I doing? The third mistake you're making in jump smash is you're not jumping from a stable position. Now, what does a stable position mean? It means when you're moving back, boom, you're fully planted before you jump. Now, in order to do this, we need to move back very quickly to get into that stable position because this takes much more time to prepare. A lot of you are moving and while you're not standing still, you try to jump like this and your momentum is flying all over the place and that is a no-go because we want our momentum to be going forwards in our jump smash when we hit the jump smash. Do you want private coaches, custom training plans, and results in your badminton journey? Well, join our free online badminton academy, link down below. The fourth mistake you're making in your jump smash is you're not focusing your power. Now, when we jump into the air, because our whole body is now engaged, we think that we can use our whole body into the jump smash, but no. In our jump smash, we still want to really focus our power. In badminton, there's only so fast, how fast you can hit it. The bird will slow down eventually. We want to focus on angle and placement, okay? And a jump smash is going to help us do that. So even when we're jumping, we're going to come up and focus just with a small swing, all our power into the small contact point instead of using our whole body and swing like that. That focus and power will actually generate you more power.